Hello there. So I'm Rachel and in a few weeks time I'm running a live in-person workshop with my friend and colleague Morchin McNamara called Care and Touch. And I want to offer you a little taster today of something that we're going to go into a little bit more deeply in the workshop but hopefully it might be really useful for anyone sitting at home and um, anyone who has a body and an and, and imagination. So at the Somatic School, I teach on the difference between what I would call transactional or objectifying touch and somatic touch or touch that invites in or wakes up our felt sense or talks to our felt sense. And what does that mean? <laughs> I'd like to unpack a little bit what that means and also give you an experience of something to help you um, know it in your own body and your own experience. So we'll do a little bit of an experiment in a second, but before I do that, I wanna just open up that territory a little bit. So my feeling is that the predominant way in which we use touch and we're taught to use touch in culture is of a transactional nature. And that is product oriented in its intention. So it's results oriented, product oriented. It's seeking to do something to someone or seeking to move matter around or seeking to get a result of some kind. I mean, I've even received body work and probably done some body work where the result is in mind, like I want someone to be more well or I'm invested in someone being healthy. Or So the intention to be results oriented in how we're using touch can be, can take lots of different forms. And even though I'm speaking about it like it's a binary, it's in fact not, it's a spectrum. But let's frame it as a binary for now so that we can kind of experience the contrast. So most of us have been on the receiving end of uh, transactional or objectifying touch. Often we've experienced the unpleasant side of that. Certainly it's the dominant way we've learned to use it, use touch, use this kind of tool of touch. Um, and that we would have encountered that any time we uh, were being punished as children. When we were first experimenting probably with sex, <laughs> when, the, when, when your body is sexualized, there's, there's that possibility of objectifying touch. But also um, sport, contact sports. Um, how we come into contact with our own bodies, brushing, how we brush our teeth, how we comb our hair, how we, how we come into contact with ourselves is often transactional. It's often um, in a subtle way and not always a harmful way, but it's like, let's get something done. You know, like, let's get this thing done. This, let's get the teeth brushed, whatever. And I want to invite you into an experiment. So we've had a lot of the negative side of transactional touch in our experience, probably up to this point. So I want to invite you into an experience of something that might be a more um, useful application um, or loving application, if you like, of transactional touch. And all you need to do this experiment is two hands and a body. So if you have two hands and you have a space in front of you that you could rest your hands, just let them rest in front of you somewhere. So there's mine resting on the table. Yeah, just like that. And then I invite you to imagine your right hand is the practitioner and your left hand is the client and let your left hand rest on the table. And now how might it be to imagine that your right hand is, let's say, a parent, parental in its nature. 
And how might it be to imagine that your left hand is a child? And let's imagine that your left hand is in danger of something. Risk, there is an, an imminent risk to the left hand. And the job of the right hand is to simply get it out of danger. So just do that for a little bit. Just um, imagine you're, le you're getting the left hand out of imminent danger. Just do that a little bit. And it requires a quickness and a nimbleness and an, and an urgency and a simplicity, if you like, in the action of the right hand. But it is a way of experiencing um, transactional touch that's actually got a lot of love in it. I once had my life rescued by someone who stopped me when I was in a shock state of walking out in front of a bunch of traffic, not because I wanted to end my life, but because I was in a, a state of shock. I didn't realise what I was doing and she pulled me back off the road and saved my life. So there's medicine in a transactional quality of touch, sometimes. And we're in a culture where the dominant language is transactional touch, that's mostly what we've learned and how mostly we've learned to use it. Sex, sport, parenting, punishment, and even handshakes. And so, um, yeah, for most of us, that's such a dominant way of using contact that there's a lot to be learned about its opposite. So let's look now at its opposite. Let's open up the possibility of what a quality of touch that invites our felt sense towards it, what might that be? And so let's stay, stay with the same experiment. So left hand on the ground, right hand is the practitioner, left hand is the client. And this time I'm, I'd like to invite you to imagine that your right hand is a field of conscious attention, a field of awareness, a field of sensitivity, and your left hand is also a field of sensitivity and a, a site of awareness and sensation, consciousness, if you like. So you have one field of consciousness and another field of consciousness. Just let your imagination trip on that for a moment. And there's a frame that was introduced to me by my teacher, Garrett Newell, that comes from Feldenkrais, which is the idea that um, when we're coming into contact with another, what might it be to make it so that it's two nervous systems having a conversation. How might it be to make it such that any kind of contact we're, come, we're, we're having, we're experiencing or offering is two nervous systems having a conversation. So, so riffing on that then, this is one source of conscious attention and this is another source of conscious attention. This one happens to be practitioner, this one happens to be client. And how might it be to bring the practitioner source of awareness towards the client source of awareness and let that settle? So I'm letting the practitioner settle on the client and just rest there for a bit. And now ask yourself from the perspective of the client, the left hand, is there anything that you'd like to change or request or adjust for your comfort. And then right hand goes ahead and obliges. So I'm noticing I kind of want to make it so that the knuckles in my right hand correspond to the, to the, to the kind of valley in the palm of my hand. So I kind of want it to be more like that. Yeah, that feels, that feels good. And just find a place that feels good for you and let that settle and maintain that contact for a moment. And then how might it be to let a little part of you, your whole system settle around that point of contact? So how might it be to notice the place where your bum is making contact with the chair? And the place where your feet are meeting the floor? How might it be to let your gaze just float away from the screen in a direction that feels pleasant and enjoyable? Maybe let the belly be soft. And notice this place of aliveness between these two points of contact, these two areas of contact.
And how's that? And how might it be to bring a little bit more of this sense of coming towards aliveness? If we were to assume aliveness in everything we're making contact with, assume aliveness, because why not? Why not bestow the gift of something being alive? If we were to be chopping vegetables in a way that honoured the aliveness in the things, how might that change how we're doing something? Cool. So that is an experiment that I would really encourage you to try at home. And that's something that we're going to be beginning with in the workshop and diving more deeply into. The workshop is on the 30th of April and the 1st of May in a beautiful space in Brighton. And there's going to be plenty of space and time to give our attention to this second quality of contact, making contact. And then there's going to be a follow-up group workshop debrief integration session on the 7th of May, because Morshin and I feel very passionately about integrating the work, that it's all very nice to have a nice workshop and learn some things, but unless it's uh, tucked into your life, then it might not necessarily stick. So that's a chance for it to stick. And you're also offered as part of the workshop price a free one-on-one -on -one somatic coaching session with either me or Morchine. And that is really to anchor the work from the workshop in your specific embodiment and your specific life inquiries. So that's the, that's the deal. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the workshop, then there's a link below. And uh, if you wanna ask me any questions, please get in touch. And there's still some spaces left. And yeah, look forward to welcoming you there.